Hi, hello, welcome in. You can call me Totes. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm so excited to see you today through the computer screen. <laughs> and I have anxiety. Surprise. Hey, hello. I wanted to share a little bit about my newest discovery of my own self-care tool for my anxiety brain tool belt. And also, I've been wanting to talk about this for a few months, and I have finally showered and blow-dried my hair, so I feel a little bit more human. <laughs> and today's the day. Yay! Everyone figures out their own self-care, right? Their own way to deal with the things in their life that cause stress, that bring us down, that tire us, that exhaust us. Maybe it's taking a nice hot bath, maybe reading a book, maybe some time with family, playing a game, all kinds of stuff. And I have a slew of hobbies that have grown out of a mixture of hyperfixation and also need for <laughs> things to feed my dopamine receptors. <laughs> and so I am not adverse to strange forms of self-care, but before I tell you mine, my strangest form of self-care, I gotta know what's yours. Comment down below, let me know, tell me, how do you take care of yourself? What are like the more common popular ways that you take care of yourself that others do as well? But tell me the weirdest one. Tell me the one that when you tell people, they give you this look. Oh. Because that, <laughs> that is the look I get when I tell people that one of my important tools in my anxiety brain tool belt, what helps me relax and feel calm and safe is to play a game called Phasmophobia. If you don't know, Phasmophobia came out a few years ago. It's technically still in early access. They continue to update it regularly. I'm gonna probably, I think I'm gonna try and, are you anywhere? Can you open a door? It's an investigatory game where you are either on your own or with a team trying to figure out and solve the mystery of what kind of ghost is haunting a particular place. And as you're looking for clues, the ghost also might try to kill you. Oh, 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 talking to the ghost it uses your microphone so it is listening to you where are oh. you where are you oh it's not cozy in here i'm so sorry are you pooping the ghost sometimes talks back i think she like threw that. a fork around somewhere i swear i heard something are you here okay i'm gonna put the spirit box down because she and will not talk. Did I put, I'll throw the EMF down. It will appear suddenly there's jump scares. Oh my God, that scared the poop out of me. Almighty, thank you so much for that follow. That, that confused surprise look is, is, is pretty normal when I tell people this. So a little background, since I haven't shared a lot of this part of myself on YouTube, in the YouTube world, I got my first diagnosis as someone with generalized anxiety disorder a long time ago. I think high school, so how is that possibly something that could curb my generalized anxiety? Why is that in my toolkit? I was reading Burnout by Amelia and Emily Nagoski, and the tagline for burnout is the secret to unlocking the stress cycle. It had been on my reading list for a very long time and I had several friends who recommended it to me hearing about some of my 
burnout fatigue and anxiety stressors that I was dealing with, with work and finances and life and everything. And I highly, highly recommend reading it just in general, because even though a lot of the research and lessons that came from the book weren't super mind blowing to me, what I appreciated was that Emily and Amelia were able to put into a concise, clear way the way in which our brains and our bodies are connected with stress and anxiety and trauma. And I think especially since 2020, so many of us are holding on to chronic, ongoing stress, stressors that don't really have a resolution. It's just... <laughs> and so... The biggest focus that I found in their book was fo this idea around the stress cycle and completing it. And it spoke to my brain in a new way, especially as I was just beginning to play this very scary, kind of intense game with friends. The cycle of stress, the way that Amelia and Emily describe it based on studies and their research, comes down to how evolutionarily our bodies and our brains are connected and when there is danger, like say a tiger or a lion, we then have a response, whether that's flight, running away, freeze, playing dead, pretending like nothing's happening, holding still and hoping that the lion doesn't see you, or fight, fighting the lion until either you or the lion is no longer able to fight each other and the threat is done. And then the third piece to this is connection because after you ran from the lion or the tiger or whatever the danger might have been or after you fought it, you then came back home. You were with your connected family unit, whatever that might look like. And sometimes it meant a big feast of, you know, lion, I guess. Sometimes it meant telling about the warning that there is a lion out there, so don't go out tonight, make sure to stay home. But either way, there's a piece of connection to it. And then our body recognizes that we're safe. Thinking of my anxiety triggers as danger was a new thought, and it felt very like privileged that my anxiety triggers could be seen in my brain and my body as a danger. But it did really help me because even though it's not a tiger or a lion chasing me, trying to eat me, a lot of that stuff gets at my core and it has threatened my life. For me, a lot of my anxiety spirals go around what people think of me, if people like me, if I'm worthy of love, if I'm good enough, if I'm worthy of anything, if I'm worth anything. And for things like that, for those anxiety triggers, the response might be processing with my therapist, spouse, or a friend. Maybe it's responding to the actual like person or group that is causing that anxiety to occur and having a conversation, sort of fighting back. Maybe it's freezing and just getting stuck but even when I do get a little bit of that connection and affirmation and relief through my very deep and large support network, my brain often does keep going through the spiral. I, I struggle to get out of the cycle to get to that safe zone. And that feeds into my anxiety and my depression. It affects my mental health, all of those things that lead to burnout. While I was reading the book and simultaneously discovering the joy of playing this very spooky game with friends, I noticed something. Every ghost hunt was a mini stress cycle. Danger. Ghost, where are you? How old are you? Can you show me? Oh, 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 no. oh, 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 It's singing creepy songs at me. Mr. Ghost. Oh. Uh, he did not like me going in there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. oh my God, it's singing. You. 
I do not like it. It's going to find me and it's going to kill me and I will be left to do nothing except maybe stare at the EMF on the ground trying to let my friends know if it hits a certain level so they can guess the ghost or I could just, you know, Oh, I just saw you die. Is that you? Okay. Yeah, it's me. I'm dead. Oh, toads. And, um, uh. I'm gonna take all this stuff and throw it into the lawn. Deal everything in the house as a little chaos goblin and wait until my friends either also die or they figure out what the ghost is and we can move on to the next round. Response. Run. Hide. Scream. Maybe die. Connection. The hunt ends, and I'm either a ghost, or I'm not. And there is this moment, after a, a big jump scare, after something ridiculously scary happens, after a noise comes from my body out of fear and anxiety. I don't know if it's gonna be a demon, because oh my God! they fear the crucifix. That I did not know I had and it's laughter. <laughs> Ew, what the heck? EMF <laughs> four. Safety. It's just a game. The kinds of things that help break the stress cycle that Amelia and Emily talk about in their book don't usually help me or are not always accessible to me. Physical activity doesn't help my brain because although I enjoy it, my anxiety brain often starts working overtime in that not good enough trigger. And creative expression helps, but my main creative expression is often writing or soap making, which can be very large projects. It's hard to sit down for just an hour to do something like that. And although I do love crying and watching movies that make me cry, most recently I just spent most of the weekend crying at Bridgerton season two for some reason, but once I've seen something, once I've watched a movie once, I usually don't respond the same way, especially if I'm watching something knowing and hoping it will make me cry. For whatever reason, the context just stops the tears from coming. But laughter is always helpful, and especially that laughter, that full belly laugh like I get hitting that safety moment while we're playing this game together. Because when you're singing a song to a ghost asking if it's pooping while your friends sing along with you. Oh, Robert Ghost. Oh, where are you? Oh, Robert Ghost. I hear him. Oh, yep. Oh, he's right there. He's oh, standing in front of the garage, just standing there. He, I mean, he's... He's standing, he's just oh, looking, no. he's to run. Ah. Ah. Oh no, he's just standing there. Okay. Just chilling. Just... Okay. <laughs> when you make a noise that surprises you, when there are plates being thrown out the front door by you or your friend who's already died and it startles you and then you get to enjoy the masterpiece that is the pile of plates on the ground. It's full on belly laughs. And that moment of fully loud laughter is where I can feel it in both my body and my brain. A release, safety. It's just a game, the ghost isn't real, and the danger is done, and now we get to go back to our group, to our social connections, to laugh, to process, and to move forward. And it's been working. It's the tool in my tool belt that I am most grateful for these days, because not only do I get that physical connection between my body and my brain, but it also is a game that I absolutely cannot play myself. It, it pushes me to reach out in that social connection to others for that shared laughter, shared screaming, and so many ridiculous songs sung at Imaginary Ghosts. Uh, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Discoveries like this have been a big reminder of why it helps my brain to keep making my way through that reading list that I have because uh, 
sometimes the book you're reading is just the thing you need in the moment to understand some of those inner workings of our anxiety brains. Do you think that there's a new self-care tool you might grab, you might pick up, you might stick in your tool belt? I'd love to hear it. And again, I'm gonna ask again what I asked at the beginning. If you have one of those self-care tools that helps you work through the stress cycle, that helps you work through your anxiety, but is very strange to anyone that you tell it to, I wanna hear it. We can commiserate together over our weird but necessary and helpful tools. And if you're still here, thanks for hanging out. You help ease that anxiety brain and remind me that I'm not alone with that silly little narrator voice going on and on in my head. And here's the little bit that I'm terrible at, but it does really help me a lot. If you like this video or just wanna see my ridiculous self playing games and talking about brain stuff, you like the goats that are often in our videos, like, subscribe, all that YouTube-y stuff. If you ever do wanna watch me live, I share sort of all the hobbies there from soap making to games to sims to spooky games like Phasmo. We often have goat cam and we spend Saturday mornings live with our goats. It's a fun place to be. You can find that over at twitch.tv slash totesmgoat. I'm there a couple times a week. I hope that you are able to take care of yourself today. I hope that this is helpful for you. Maybe this can be a tool for your tool belt and if not, maybe it's a tool for somebody else, somebody that you know that's dealing with some generalized anxiety and has a good support and good medical health providers that are working with them, but could always use one more thing to add to the tool belt and whatever it is that you're needing today. Take care of yourself. You deserve it. You're worth it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Are there any ghosts here? I already forgot the ghost name. <laughs>